Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. I think it's fair to say for all Age of Empires players, whether or not they play online now, at one point they started by playing against the AI. It's a near universal experience that we've all played at least some of the campaigns and at least a handful of random map games against the computer. We all know the level of challenge it can offer, but have you ever wondered how exactly it works? How did the developers go about making a computer that can play at such a competent level and provide a real challenge to even relatively experienced players? For this video, what I want to explore is how the AI actually thinks. To begin with, in the HD version, there are of course two different AIs. There's the original Conqueror CD AI and the new HD one. The HD AI is the one that I'm going to be focusing on as it is quite a bit more advanced and also the one I think more people are playing against currently. If you bought the game on Steam, you've certainly played against it, but maybe haven't been properly introduced. In fact, I'd like to take the opportunity to formally introduce you to it. Here it is. It's tens of thousands of lines of code outlining all of its strategies and behaviors. You'll find things ranging from pre-programmed strategies depending on its civilization, to rules about minimum water sizes for docks, what to do in deathmatch games, and how often and where to build new mills if the number of farms increases. Everything it does comes down to the simple idea of an if-then statement. For any rule, you have conditions and then actions, analogous to the conditions and effects in the scenario editor, but just many more of them and with a different set of options to choose from. In this example of a rule, if a particular condition is met, and in this case the AI has more than 15 farms and a single town center with less than two mills, then it will build another, with a small set of rules about where it should be built to minimize distance to farms, but not too close to another mill. Another example, this time with a technology, is if the AI confirms that an enemy has three or more military units, has reached castle age, or has a plan to hunt a boar and is unable to queue up a villager, it'll either research loom or set it as a priority. You can see how using or statements allows you to make a variety of conditions that reach the same goal. On the flip side, you could use and statements so that multiple conditions need to be met in order to trigger the same outcome. So now that we have a very basic sense of how an AI works, we're actually already at the limit of my personal understanding. To get a deeper insight into how the AI works and thinks, I went straight to the source and chatted with Promi, one of the creators of the HD AI. Let's check it out. Hey man, so first of all, it's great to chat with you. Do you mind introducing yourself for the people watching? Yes, absolutely. I'm Marius Beck. I'm better known as Promi, and I'm the AI scripter for Forgotten Empires for the Age of Empires 2 HD edition. So first of all, I think it has to be asked just because it comes up so often. Does the HD AI on Hardest get extra resources? That's a good question. Uh, and no, it does actually never cheat for resources, not even on the hardest difficulty level. So there's um, no way that by default the AI would do that. Um, the original AI used in the disk version of the game and also still available as original AI does cheat sometimes um, in certain settings, for example, on the hardest difficulty level, but also on King of the Hill, for example, even on moderate and plus. And um, just a new default AI would never do that. So would you say that was a conscious decision at the very start that you wanted to make the AI so it didn't have to cheat? Absolutely. That was exactly the decision making. And also, if we would have made a cheat on the hardest difficulty level, as AIs used to before our changes, then um, the yeah, difficulty difference uh, to the lowest difficulty level would have been even higher. And making the steps from moderate to hard, for example, even higher than they are right now. So that was definitely a conscious decision. Interesting. Just while we're on the topic, where would you say the biggest jump is? Is it standard to moderate, moderate to hard, or would you say it's pretty evenly spaced? Um, based on feedback, I found that standard to moderate, uh, the jump is a bit too steep, and um, I agree with that. It was quite challenging um, trying to make it a static uh, difficulty level scaling, so not adapting too much to the player, which was the initial idea. Um, in hindsight, though, it would have been better to make it a bit more mixed, to adapt a little bit to what's happening in the game, and that is why uh, currently standard to moderate is still very steep. And then actually moderate to high difficulty level is also quite noticeable for players. But at this point, it's it's kind of funny that the bigger difference in difficulty um, does not even make 
it is not that even that noticeable because people who can beat moderate are also quite advanced at the game already and can just find ways easier again to uh, beat the hard difficulty level. Mm -hmm. Cool. So for people like me without any background in scripting, can you outline how making an AI works? Like it seems overwhelming that you're making something that has to be flexible and competent in so many situations. So how do you start making those 27,000 lines of code and make sure it all works together? Yeah, so in the latest version, it's actually even 32,000. So that's indeed quite massive. <laughs> wow. And um, to do that, or to how it comes to that, I will go into that in a second. But the baseline is quite simple. It's actually really just if then. Um, that's exactly the structure of the AI script. And um, so it starts off very simple. You can just say, can I build a house? Like, do I have the resources? Do I have a builder? And then I'm just building a house. And of course, then you need to check, do I need to build a house? And like, do I have enough population headroom? Like, do I actually need to uh, support more population? And um, yeah, what goes into it then, like is so many more uh, decision-making uh, conditions. Yeah, and then making for that massive script is when you really have to think about, okay, if it's that kind of map which you're playing on or some other conditions are different, it needs to support that all. And that really makes for the massive script in the end. It's such an interesting process, though, because these are the same decisions that a real player would make, right? And you're just sort of reverse engineering that to say, well, what are the steps that go into each decision? I think that's really interesting. Oh, yeah, it's very similar, indeed. So as soon as the game starts, can you just tell me a little bit, like, what does the AI actually know about the map? Like, does it know enemy locations or does it have to scout like everybody else? Yeah, that's very interesting because for the um, original developers, made it very realistic. So in many other games, the AI would know a lot of things. Like in some shooting games, the AI always knows where you are. And it's just acting like it doesn't. Um, but for Age of 2, actually, the AI has no idea where you are at the beginning of the game. It still has to send a scout to see you. Um, so there's some little tricks that the AI uses, which is, for example, once it has scouted you, that it will know about what your population is. It doesn't know which units you have, but it knows how much military you have, how many civilian units. That's maybe an interesting thing for players uh, to know. Mm. And as for start of the game again, like for resources, it also has to find those. Basically, it can only see resources um, inside of its normal view, like for any other player too, and has to use the scout a lot which is why sometimes the AI actually on HD misses some sheep, which will hurt us in the beginning of the game because it doesn't have that additional food. And otherwise, for, for example, what units you have, also the AI needs to scout you and these units and uh, see them personally in the active view to really uh, be able to counter those. So what is it that counts as it scouting you? Is it just seeing your town center? Is it seeing any building? Is it seeing any unit? What is the actual threshold? Yeah, so it actually just needs to see any building of you. Once it knows the building, it can already um, check your population. And um, yeah, it's just able to attack you there. But otherwise, like for what specific units, yeah, just does, the AI has no idea until it meets those specific units. Interesting. So one of the new features in HD was that the AI can now lure boar, which I assume involved programming a lot of individual steps in sequence. And it's actually quite good at not losing villagers while doing that as well. Would you say that's the most complicated thing that the AI does? Or what would you say is the hardest behavior to get it to do? Well, luring boar was actually, yeah, indeed one of the most complicated things for HD, as also the behavior um, for the AI uh, is quite specific. And you yeah, really have to be careful to do it properly, to not lose any villagers, but also to not pull too many villagers um, to help. And in the end, the AI is using, a, it's doing it slightly different than normal humans and is using a second support lure once the boar is a bit closer just to um, secure the lure of the boar. Otherwise, some completely new behaviors uh, comparing to the CD version of the game, which are very important, were also, for example, retreating, which is a crazy thought that this did not, it did not exist back then. Um, but units were just able to attack and stop attacking. And um, yes, on the HD edition, it's possible to retreat, stop to retreat and attack again. With that, you can actually dodge some um, fortifications because you can actually um, detect these projectiles now and, uh, and avoid running into castles with your crossbowmen, for example. 
Um, so yeah, there are definitely some bigger upgrades compared to the CD version of the game in um, actually being able to yeah, script some of the more the advanced features, like which humans would do naturally, but were still completely missing for the AI. Yeah, one thing that I notice hasn't been implemented is a strict build order. I do find the AI tends to be a little bit all or nothing, where it'll send every villager to berries, and then it's low on wood, and it sends everything to wood. Are build orders possible to make, or would you say there's too many limitations on the AI for that? Yeah, so at the moment, it's definitely still um, like that. But the AI is sometimes just not able to find its sheep, etc., which kind of inhibit the ability to make a build order uh, very precise. And um, you also cannot control the villagers separately on HD, which is also an um, interesting thought, because then you can just say how many of those villagers you want to have on food, how many you want to have in wood. And that can cause these big shifts once, for example, sheep run out or boar runs out and the AI has no sheep. And then everyone goes to berries. And um, yeah, that makes it a little bit impossible to do a very precise build order. And um, so the AI usually has to go up a little bit later to the next stage than humans do in order to achieve the same thing. I actually find it interesting how well it does, even considering that obviously non-optimal strategy of sending everything to one resource and then to another. Yeah, indeed. Like um, the resource percentages, etc., are still based on actual build order values. So that means that the AI is still trying to get the specific amount of food and uh, wood and has the correct combinations in order to go up to, let's say, the feudal age for a feudal age attack um, and a certain amount of time, as I said, it's a little bit slower than humans, or also a fast castle age uh, time is also achieved pretty well without any idle towns in the time and still at a reasonable uh, timing uh, as well in order to get some knights out in a team game and still attack the enemy w uh, within well under 20 minutes. And also, I, I think the archers and skirmisher rush is pretty good by it. It's not super early, but it's very strong. Yeah, exactly. Like, really strong humans are still able to abuse the AI just by the fact that it ages up a bit slower than humans. So they're still able to hit those villagers while the AI is still building the archery ranges. But besides that, if you give the AI a little bit of time, it's actually quite formidable in the feudal age as well. I would say that too. Yeah, completely agree. So I've noticed the AI has a variety of strategies and seems to choose between them depending on how many players there are. There's a very clear skirmisher and archer strategy and a very clear fast castle among others. What goes into that decision of what strategy to go for? Yeah, exactly. And also, as you just mentioned, that it's different in team games. That's completely true. The AI can recognize whether it's in a pocket or flank uh, position, which basically means whether it's uh, close to an enemy or not. And if it's pocket, then the AI will decide to go for a fast castle strategy in almost all cases, um, just because it's then able to train some really strong power units, such as a knight. And sometimes even going for things like monk rushes, crossbow uh, rushes, or cavalry archer rushes, castle drop strategies. And um, so that's just really based on the position inside the game. And also, of course, on the civilization, and partially even on the map. Um, AIs have it a bit tough to detect whether it's a land or water map. Hmm. They usually just count the fish or check if it's, like you can cheat for counting fish and the AI only does it for Gaia units, so resources. For actual counts, it still does not know where it is. And um, in these cases, it might still go for a water strategy then and try to prepare for that in hopes of finding actual water. And um, as flank, yes, it will just go for early attacks in the feudal age usually skirmishers and archers, but can also go for scouts sometimes. And you know what's funny is I played against the AIs, like 2 verse 1 and 3 verse 1. I actually found the 3 verse 1 was a little bit easier because all three went for a fast castle. Maybe just because it was a larger map size or further away or something, as opposed to the tiny map size. But yeah, no, I, th I thought it was funny that it was actually easier with an extra one because, you know, you have that window where you could hit them early. Yeah, makes sense. So the map size can definitely impact that and also the distance um, to the enemy. Uh, another thing, though, is that if the AI had a really terrible start, then sometimes it may recognize that it will be too late for a feudal age attack. And then it's in, in a tough spot. It has to decide, do I go for a really late feudal age attack? Or do I just hope to, um, with the number of villagers that fits a fast castle, just go for a fast castle and possibly defend with tower if necessary? But that leads to another issue where building towers, etc., is really limited um, currently still, 
where you cannot place it in specific um, positions. That would be different on the user patch, but for HD, that makes it a bit tougher for the AI. So you mentioned that there's some limitations on the HD AI, and I was wondering if you could elaborate a bit on what those are. Is it just that the AI is only aware of certain factors or there's only certain actions that it can do? Yeah, so for the differences of user patch, especially, I, I could mention quite a few things there that would show the AI limitations in general, and also especially for the HD edition still. Um, and that is, for example, that the biggest one maybe is even that you cannot select units and task them to something. So you cannot do any manual micro. You can only use general things such as I want to attack and I have a preference to attack this type of building and this type of unit. And um, on the user patch, for example, you can select separate units and task them, for example, to a tree in the early game to make for really precise build orders or also in the late game or even any time where you have soldiers to just uh, take these soldiers and go to specific raiding locations or anything similar to that. Um, but some other limitations, which are more general maybe, are that, for example, the AI cannot easily detect if it's a water map or not because it cannot find the water. Like it cannot actually detect it. Well, on the user patch, it's also possible to detect it, but you still have to scout it first, of course. And that is sometimes a bit late for the AI. So that makes it a bit difficult for them to play water maps. And also there are some other things with villager retreating. If you attack the AI, you might have noticed that the AI is a bit wonky if you attack their villagers. They usually go back to their main town center or yeah, run back and forth. And that is really easy to abuse. And that is also possible to improve on with micro. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things, but the limitations which I like are still that the AI is not able to cheat most things. Like it does not know most things about you until it has scouted you. So that I think is very cool in Age of Empires 2 compared to most other games. Yeah, I agree. One interesting thing is I know that he's just speaking about the villager behavior. I notice now the villagers also don't follow your units around the map, which I think is a big improvement and just much more realistic. Oh yeah, there were definitely issues with that when people were rushing or even just using their scout to attack yeah. enemy villagers. And those were just would just follow all over the map and that has been fixed, thankfully. So that is um, very good. So would you say that the AI is aware of the units that it's fighting? Like, does it know if it's up against a bunch of archers? And can you program it to make appropriate counter units? Or is it able to do that? Oh, yeah, that's definitely possible. Right now, it's even maybe doing too many counter units, which can lead to the fact that the AI has a very big mix of units. And um, so that might obscure sometimes whether it's actually reacting to something specific or just going for everything at once. Uh, but you're saying it does, it knows what you're making and it can actually make counter units to that? Like, is oh, that yeah. happening? Yep, absolutely. Really? Yep. Okay. It does need to see your units, but then it can see, oh, I saw five archers. I'm assuming that the enemy has a bigger group of archers, for example. And then it can go for mangonels, it can go for skirmishers, which are all good against archers, of course. And some other decisions. Or so just can think about, hey, I have knights. I don't need any additional mangonels for now because I my knights have chain barding armor or whatever you upgraded in the blacksmith and um, just they can sustain these archer attacks and um, yeah so they can fully react to what you have which is quite nice for an AI to do. Wow I didn't realize the HD AI was doing that. Crazy. So maybe this is a bit too philosophical but do you think it's possible to create an AI that could beat any player in the world or even a team of the best players? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I do think that it is possible. I also do think that it's very time consuming and complex in the way um, that we can script an AI at the moment. And it would also have to be on the user patch because there yeah, you can do so many things with micro that you would not be able to do otherwise. And while talking about that, many people are actually interested in the topic of machine learning. And there even has, have been some posts about machine learning AI for Age Empires 2. Hmm. And that would, of course, be possible at some point to beat any player in the world. But um, that would have its other flaws. Uh, in, for example, that you cannot take that at any state um, and change it because it's unreadable for humans at that point. Hmm. Um, but for even for scripting one um, yourself, like actually designing it, um, it would be possible to do that. And we're definitely not at the point yet, but we already can see some very strong user patch AIs, which are even a bit better than the HD AI. And um, yeah, I hope to see more there in the future. 
I'm also still active in the AI script community for HMPS2 myself. So yeah, I hope people look out for those and try to go against them because they're actually quite tough. And even professional players, which were still able to beat, let's say, four AIs in one team in the past, um, have been seen uh, dying to three AIs in the same team. So we're getting closer. <laughs> it's interesting. So while I've avoided getting into all of the technical aspects of scripting AIs, I hope this still gave you a bit more insight into the how and why of some of the AI's decision making. If you're curious to see the script itself, there's an older version of the script on GitHub that I'll link in the description, but you can also access the most recent version in the game files. That's all for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.